What is up guys and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'll be talking about keybinds in Fortnite and more specifically the best keybinds that you should use in Fortnite Chapter 3. The tips I give in this video are going to apply to all players, whether you're a complete beginner or a seasoned competitive player. And my goal here is basically to help you find the perfect keybinds, that way you can maximize your performance in game and become a more consistent player. If this video helps you out, then be sure to drop a like on it and consider subscribing as well if you want to see more tips and tricks content just like this in the future. And finally guys, I'm actually beginning to stream a lot more often on Twitch, so if if you want to see arena gameplay live playing with viewers and all sorts of other stuff the link is going to be right at the top of the description i'd really appreciate it if you guys could head over there and drop a follow that way you see whenever i start up the stream but with all that said and without further ado let's get into today's video so the first thing i want to talk about in this video is the goals that you should actually have with your keybinds and just some general guidelines that you should go by when you're picking them out i've noticed a lot of common mistakes and issues that players have with keybinds so i really wanted to make sure that we cover all of our bases before we get into the actual keybinds themselves so the first thing i want to mention for this part of the video is don't force your keybinds. What I mean is even if there's a set of keybinds that's super optimal and fits every single requirement that I'm going to bring up, if it doesn't feel right to you, then you shouldn't force it. So many pro players have sets of keybinds that look absolutely ridiculous. Think of someone like Booga, whose build binds are X, V, C, and left shift. 99% of us with those keybinds would feel completely wonky and probably wouldn't even be able to do 90s properly, but he's comfortable with them and they work for him, so therefore they're more optimal for him. On the other hand, Benji Fisher uses what are pretty much considered to be near perfect keybinds with Q, a mouse button, C, and left shift. My point here is that keybinds are a big spectrum, and you shouldn't force yourself to use something that's uncomfortable to you simply because a content creator says it's good to use. Everyone is different, and chances are your best set of keybinds are going to be way different from mine and from those of pro players. So just keep that in mind as the video goes on. So when it comes to the specifics of your keybinds, there are typically four requirements that I go for when looking at a set of keybinds. These requirements include finger spreading, using mouse buttons, distance to WASD, and finally, comfort. So the first requirement, finger spreading, basically means not overusing one finger. For example, if you have all your binds on your index finger with something like R, F, T, and G, that one finger is going to get super fatigued and your overall speed is going to be drastically limited. As a general rule, when you combine your building binds, trap bind, and edit bind, the best rule is to make sure that no finger is being used more than two times. The second requirement you're going to want to fix is using mouse buttons. This is super simple and basically means making good use of the side buttons and scroll wheel on your mouse. These are some of the easiest to reach and fastest keys that you have so typically you're going to be best off using them for important actions like building. I do recommend using two mouse buttons for building, adding a scroll wheel reset in one direction, and then either pressing on your scroll wheel or scrolling it the other way for reload. But I'll get into the reload bind later in the video. But overall, it's critical that you use your mouse binds effectively as this can make or break your whole set of keybinds. Third up, when we've got distance to WASD, which is a super simple one, obviously the keys that you use should be close to your WASD binds or whatever binds you use to move. That way they'll be easier to hit and you'll be able to build and edit much faster. Pretty simple stuff. And finally, Finally, the last requirement for a good set of keybinds is simply comfort, which is something we already discussed briefly. Basically, even if your keybinds are 100% optimal, the perfect set of keybinds, they're only going to be good if you're comfortable with them. So don't be pressured to use quote unquote optimal keybinds unless they feel good to you. Typically, fitting all four of these requirements is absolutely perfect. Hitting three is pretty solid, and hitting one or two usually means that you're either an outlier, which is perfectly fine, of course, or you might want to explore some other ways to fit the requirements. But if you can't, then of course, just do what works best for you. So with that said, guys, now that we've gone through all the fundamentals you're going to need to know when it comes to keybinds, now we're going to actually start to get into the juicy stuff, aka the actual keybinds themselves. The sets of keybinds I'm going to go over are going to cover, at minimum, three of the four bases we've discussed, and some of them should cover all four as well. I'll try to be really inclusive with it and include keybinds that fit multiple playstyles and strategies, that way you're going to have tons of solid options to choose from. So getting into our first set of keybinds, these keybinds are going to be my general choice when it comes to quote-unquote optimal binds. The majority of high-level players tend to run with keybinds like these, and overall they're just very very reliable. These binds include a side mouse button for wall, V for floor, another side mouse button for ramp, left shift for cone, and tab for trap. Finally, you've got E for edit as well. Typically, V for floor is pressed with your thumb, but if you're not comfortable with that, then you could use your index finger for V or even switch it to an easier index bind like F. Either way, you're still not going over two keys per finger. As well as that, you also have the Q button open for another bind, which is super close to WASD and can be a really useful bind. This set of key binds fits all the requirements that we discussed earlier on in the video, and I'd say for 60 or 70% of viewers, this is going to be the one you prefer, or at least something very close to it with a few small adjustments based on your preference. So for the next set of keybinds, we're going to be doing a set of binds that mainly emphasizes pure building speed rather than movement. With the first set, your movement binds are usually pretty easy to press, but this set is going to be more of a hardcore, fast building and editing type of vibe. So this set of keybinds is going to be side mouse button for wall, F for floor, another side mouse button for ramp, Q for cone, left shift for trap, and finally E for edit. So this set of keybinds is somewhat similar to the first since it has side mouse buttons for wall and 
one ramp, but instead of using V and left shift for other build binds, it uses Q and F, which are a bit faster because they use your ring and index fingers. The only problem is that they do somewhat limit your movement left and right. But if that's a trade-off you're willing to make to potentially build faster, then it might be worth trying out this set. This is actually really close to the key binds that I use, but mine are just oriented differently. Instead of using my F and Q for floor and cone, I actually have my wall and floor as Q and F respectively. And then I use my side buttons for ramp and cone, E for edit, and V for trap. So if you're curious which of these sets is closest to the binds that I personally use and prefer, I'd say that this one would be it. Finally, guys, for our last set of key binds in this video, I know a lot of you guys might be playing on different types of setups, and some of you guys might not have mouse buttons as we discussed earlier, but I didn't want to leave you guys out, so this last set of key binds is going to be close to optimal while not utilizing any mouse buttons, basically for those of you who just don't have them. These key binds are going to include Q for wall, V for floor, which you're preferably going to hit with your thumb, then you've got F for ramp, left shift for cone, tab for trap, and finally E for edit. This set of key binds is pretty darn close to optimal despite not using any mouse buttons, and it also uses E for edit, which as you can probably tell by now is my top recommendation for an edit bind, hence why every single key bind set I've shown has been E for edit. With this set, you can also feel free to reorient the keys if you're uncomfortable with hitting V with your thumb, then maybe you can consider hitting it with your index or switch to something like R if it's more comfortable. Overall though, I think this set should serve you really well if you don't have side buttons on your mouse. And before we wrap up this video guys, I want to talk about a few other binds that you have. For the sake of time, I only covered building, editing, and trap since those are the binds that most people struggle with, but there are a few other binds you're going to want to look at as well. When it comes to weapon slots, my recommendation is super simple. Just do one for pickaxe, then two, three, four, five, six for your weapons. If you have leftover keys that you don't have set to anything and they're close to WASD, then you can also consider switching out your last slot or two, that way you don't have to reach so far for your heal slots. For example, I use C and R for my fourth and fifth weapon instead of five and six, and that really just makes it easier to press and just makes my whole experience a lot better. For reload, I recommend you either scroll your scroll wheel or simply click on it, which is called middle mouse button. It's super easy to reach, but it's a bit harder to use for building compared to your side buttons, so I prefer to use it for an important action that really doesn't require such crazy precision like building does. So basically, either scroll your scroll wheel or press it down. For a use bind, aka the bind you use to pick things up and such, I recommend using one bind close to WASD. Personally, I use G, but you can also add another bind, that way you can hit both and have a higher chance of winning 50-50s, or you can even add a scroll wheel direction to it if you have one open. That way, when you're in a 50-50, you can just scroll your scroll wheel and hope that you get the weapon. Finally, the last binds are going to be map and inventory. Personally, I prefer using a thumb bind for map, which I set as M, and then a close bind for inventory, which is X in my case. But honestly, these are really just going to come down to whatever you've got left. You can use thumb binds like B, N, or M, or you can use leftover binds close to WASD like Z, X, C, or whatever else you may have available. But with all that said, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today's video on the best key binds to use on keyboard and mouse in chapter 3. If this video helped you out, then be sure to drop a like on it and hit that big red subscribe button if you want to see more. As well as that, if you want to help your boy out a bit extra, then consider using code Teco in the Fortnite item shop as it's absolutely free and it really helps your boy out a bunch. If you do use my code to buy something, then send me it over on my Twitter, which is at Teco with two H's, or Instagram, which is just at Teco, as I'm planning to give shout outs to some people who use it. Both of those accounts are going to be linked down in the description as well. But with that said, thank you all for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.